Welcome to the What's Our Verdict podcast. We fashion ourselves television judge and jury. My name is JJ Crowder. I'm here with my co-hosts, Matt Sineiner. Better red than dead. And Alec Burgess. Call me Damon Targaryen, second of my name. I think someone's oh, pumped about good. this episode. I love it. As always, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you tuning in. If you're watching live, love it. If you're listening to us after the fact, love it just as much. Go ahead and hit that follow, subscribe, like button, the bell notification so you keep up with all of our episodes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Alec, if you're on YouTube watching, you can see Alec is now Alec Targaryen. Um, and the wig looks just as good as the ones on the show. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> right? <laughs> Five bucks. That's Boom. right. Telling you. We have zero budget problems with this show, I swear. Hilarious. I love it. All right, so we are here to talk House of the Dragon, Season 1, Episode 3. Um, and unlike if you've been watching live, what we just talked about, I was finally feeling it. This show got really good this episode. I was going to say, JJ, after what I saw, I've, I'm just waiting here. I feel like they gave you what you were looking for. Absolutely. I I loved it. I loved – and the funny part is, is – other than the end, like the first battle, I was like, okay, this is cool. But all the stuff in the middle, the intrigue and the drama and like the actual coming of age of these characters and the realization of all the shit that they're in, like that was more interesting to me than even the battles and the violence. Like, because watching Rhaenyra, like, and we know she's been doing this for at least a couple of years now, like bottling up all the bullshit she's been having to go through. Um, it's just interesting to see the rest of it. So what did you guys think? Matt, you're Alex. up. Oh, I'm up? You're up. Oh, man. I mean, Jay just said a lot of it, but I'm just going to I'm gonna go to the end. I got I to gotta talk about my boy Damien. I mean, what a G. When he gets – when uh, Viserys finally decides, hey, I, I'm helping my brother out. I'm sending troops. I'm sending aid. And the, the – um, Lord Corellius and like they're kind of doubting Damon and like a lot of people have died, a lot of ships have burned. And then Damien gets that the message from the messenger, reads it, and just starts beating the living shiz out of him. And then we finally see we're like, this dude's going on a solo mission. He doesn't want help. He's gonna end it on his terms. Man, like the imagery, the bossness, like the balls, the sheer, like we're talking like metal weighted diamond studded balls that are just dragging on the ground at this point. I mean, oh, like I just, it was awesome. Just that, that whole build, that fight. And then at some point when he took a couple errors, I liked that they didn't make this dude invincible. Like you knew he was going to get hit. He was going to get hurt. And it looked like he was probably going to die. And then those dragons appear out of nowhere the fighting amongst all that and just the battle that ensued. So cool to see all of that. And just to see that story for him, as I assume, because he survives and what's going to happen out of that. He made a name. Like he is now not just the the King's brother. He is the individual that killed the, what the, the crab, what do they call him again? Crab feeder, crab feeder. Like, and he killed him in a dope way. And he basically did it himself. You know, like uh, the, and what's the Lord Corellius's, what's his faction called? Like his house of the... The Valerians. Uh, the, like they're, they they got to respect Damien now. Like the dude did it and he didn't need his brother and it was freaking awesome. I mean, that was a very... I'm really liking Damien's character because I know he... Now he's got credibility. He's going to pop off and I don't know what way it's going down, but I am in his camp. Rhaenyra and Viserys became my favorite characters this episode. Yeah, I, I lo- yeah, it was good. Viserys, you know, he a little whiny bitch. So. Oh, for sure. But <laughs> the Summer King, he came through, and what they're doing with his character is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and I noticed he's missing two fingers now. Mm-hmm. They chopped another one off for him, so the rot is spreading. Right, they took one digit, didn't slow the spread, so he's got another one. I didn't one. notice that. I'll have to go back mm-hmm. and look. Yeah, I was like, oh, I noticed something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have this whole, you know, kind of uh, image or this, you know, he takes the entire court pretty much to go hunting in the Kingswood when there's a war on. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's this perfect kind of image of the weak summer king. And I love it because he has no concern over the fact that his realm is being, you know, picked apart uh, piece by piece. Um, and I, 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 wow, it was awesome. 
And well, then, he's just doing it out of pure stubbornness. Yeah, like, he's, he's just being a dick. It's it's not. It's just like my brother pissed me off, so screw that guy. Uh, so good. And yeah. then Rhaenyra, uh, yeah, she's been good from the beginning, mm-hmm. and then she just keeps getting better and better and better. Um, and I, I really hope she gets the throne, and there's not going to be that uh, that kind of rebellion and whatnot even though i know it probably isn't the case but <laughs> i can tell I, you but then i'd have to kill you <laughs> yeah but she's so so cool i love watching yeah. her on screen um and dude she took out a fucking boar mm-hmm. i mean technically what's his face helped her he, yeah he he actually helped her stuck it with a yeah, sword but, but she's royalty she's page. gonna write the book well, and I love like when she like rampage, like you can just tell she's letting out years of being pissed at, at like and having to be courtly because unfortunately, and what you don't think about and what I didn't think about until this episode is she has to be on her best behavior at all times because all especially now the last year or two years because her little bro- half brother's born on a whim, her dad could take away the ability for her to be queen and and take away her rights, you know, in that way. And that's what everybody wants. But imagine the frustration of like, of having to to deal with the Lannister. Yeah. Well, that too. (laughs) What a dick. (laughs) Yeah. Like frankly, the whole thing, you're like, what is happening right now? Like, it's just, I would hate to be her. Cause again, you're stuck, right? Like you, you don't have a choice, but to, to be proper all the time and not, get in trouble because if you get in trouble you're no longer the heir and now she has a little more leeway i think because at the end of this episode her dad basically swore to her that he'll never take away her her being the heir so yeah which he told her that when they were alone fair, fair. yeah what, not in writing but what yeah. happens when he's he dies anyway die soon. it doesn't matter when he dies it doesn't matter what he said yeah well at least that's he's got how a long I'm way it. before he dies to be honest with you like they're they're full on adults and have he has like I think he might have a great grandkid by the time he dies. So then there's still gonna be some time jump because there's a whole nother Rhaenyra and so Allison actress coming. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. That was my question because I was like, they're to a point where if they're jumping drop, another two, four years, like this current version of Rainier is like it it just won't work. Like Yeah. So there's I think you're gonna get another from what I saw based that you'll see one more in you know a few months time jump maybe not at all because it looks like according to the preview that i saw damon's coming back to say i'm now the king of the the narrow sea which is a very interesting time frame um but they're still young at that point and then there's gonna be another jump where i think they'll jump after that to way in the future and that's when shit start getting starts getting weird and then like a lot of these the the posturing for who's going to be king, who's going to be queen. Um, I will give you the secret that the king never does take away her being the heir, but shit goes sideways real quick when Viserys dies. Oh, yeah, you can already tell like because people don't respect a, a woman on the throne anyways, and that's a lot of what this episode showed is people are already talking behind the king, and he knows it, and now he's realized it, and... But he's also he's just not a very powerful king. He just kind of he's yeah. weak, very weak. Well, now you have all of these families that want to be involved because shit gets even more complicated because technically. Yeah, I won't go there because we'll see how it goes. But there's some air. There's other families that get drawn into this because Rhaenyra does get married. And so there's additional families that are now all looking and going, hey, I want my kid to be king or queen or you know whatever it might be so there's a lot of complex issues coming that we're just now starting to see how they get there so i appreciate the fact that they've taken their time in getting here because this episode was cool and it was really fun to see these characters getting tied in like watching rhaenyra in this episode and that actress is killing it um i hope the next one that plays her is just as good so uh, yeah there's a lot you don't want to marry your two-year-old sibling? Yeah, your two-year-old half-brother. I mean, technically, it's not weird for Targaryens, but... 
<laughs> um, uh, what I loved about that was you have Otto Hightower who suggested it, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's his grandson mm-hmm. who's going to be on the throne, right? Dude plays the Game of Thrones great. He's like Littlefinger from the original series. Mm-hmm. Then you have who's the I can't remember his name. The guy who Harwin. Makes, I can't, Harwin. His All last the name right I, decisions. Yeah, I think and Harwin's his last name. He he's awesome. He's like I told you once. Yeah, you didn't listen. I'm gonna tell you again. <laughs> this is what you need to do for A B C D. He's the only one who wants to keep that realm together. Yeah, uh, which means he's yeah, and he's get poisoned. And he has no he has no horse in the race, right? Like he just is looking at the realm. That's why I kind of like him. He's like kind of like the the ned stark of this he just wants what's best for the realm and so he's yeah you know he's yeah. not long Give for the sound world advice he's not yeah <laughs> ah know. ned's ned Brother stark a name i now recognize yeah <laughs> well and he's so break bones they did mention break bones and he'll have a bigger role to play in this Excellent. story when they get down so his kid break bones will have a much bigger story to play or part to play in this story so i'm very interested on how that they'll introduce him to other than the the name drop in this particular episode. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this episode. I feel like this show's finally hit its stride and is moving forward pretty quickly, which I'm excited for. And I think there's a lot of cool stuff that could come and I hope they continue to play it the way that they have. Cause it's, it, I, I, this episode was dope. I will say I was surprised how effective the triarchy and the crab feeder were at lasting out in the stepstones. Mm-hmm like unfazed by the fact that there was a dragon yeah just hide in the cave yep. it's like, wow. dragons dragons that's a funny one uh alec like is that. alec is currently frozen now he's back. back and he's back i mean dragons could only uh get in there so far but those are baby dragons because that one what's that ego egg egg igor igor with the huge dragon that they had, the skull. Oh, Balerion, the black dread. Oh, Balerion, that thing's like, what, yeah. 10 times the size of the dragons that I saw on screen? Yeah, yeah those are mature dragons, but they're they're little mature dragons. <laughs> they're young. So my when when at the beginning when they showed Damien and they the crab people were shooting like fire arrows... It just didn't seem like a smart fighting tactic. It seemed like Damon is just being overly cocky. Hey, I have a dragon. I'm going to burn all you people. But at some point, if you have enough arrows and people, like a dragon can't do everything. Well, that's usually... So the, the arrows can't pierce the dragon's hide. Oh, they can't? Not no. even the wings? Arrows, no. Arrows won't hurt. Like, it might stick in a wing or something, but not enough that it hurts at anything. That's mm-hmm. one of the things in the books that they talk about is that the arrows are like throwing toothpicks at a dragon. What they have to do is they build later on. They build these big, uh, huge. Uh, what are they Ballista. called? Ballista with these massive arrows in them, mm. and those will do some damage. But normal arrows won't hurt. That was one of the things. A lot of times they talk about the dragon riders getting killed because they were overly cocky, and the arrows can still kill the rider. They just can't mm-hmm. kill the dragon. So, uh, so that's why it's still. I mean, because Damon was overly cocky. You're like, dude, like yeah. maybe, maybe like go back in the air. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's funny. He he had to, he had to learn the hard way, but I mean, the man is brash. Like he's what do you expect? He's gonna go fight all them and not die. I mean, I guess he was prepared to die, and yeah, he that's was. fine. Uh, but it just makes you wonder because his his whole thought process then it must be like, well, I was prepared to die. I didn't die. I'm triumphant. I did this and. Now I, I know what I'm capable of, and I feel like he's got to be a man with even – I feel like he didn't even have fear before, but now he's he's yeah. got none. He was ready to die. Yeah. Yeah, he was. All right. Well, I would say we've talked a lot about these shows. We will be back around next week about this same time, talk about both of these shows again. Um. Hey, if you guys have questions, anything you need to bring to the table when you see some, let us know before. Bring it to the show. We love to yeah. to answer things clearly. I don't know anything, uh, but I'll <laughs> I'll provide my two cents. Alec doesn't look like he knows anything right now, uh, but we have JJ. <laughs> Alec might outtake me on Lord of the Rings, but I think Game of Thrones, I got him. 
So, <laughs> JJ, right. you, you can't know everything. You can't be a nerd of Marvel, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, and Game of Thrones. Watch me. I just think Alec has a little more knowledge on the Lord of the Rings side than I do. So, but what not, JJ I mean, doesn't know is I'm sitting here Googling everything oh. <laughs> as it comes up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can hang with him, but he might have me there. So, all right. Well, Matson, tell everybody where they can find us if they're not watching us live. Hey, if you're already, if you're not on YouTube, uh, you can definitely listen to our podcast. Where we good podcasts can be found on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, to name a few. At What's Our Verdict reviews. Uh. Check us out at What's Our Verdict dot com. Uh, to see what's on the docket for the future. Drop us a comment. Uh, if you want us to review something, uh, email us at hosts at whatsourverdict.com. Charles and a few others have certainly done so. Uh, we're always looking to to please the common folk, as I like to say. Um, and if you want to interact with us on social media, TikTok is where it is at at the moment. Alec is doing his thing. Weird videos galore. Um, check us out there as well. But we are excited to continue on with these two shows, keep doing She Hulk, sprinkling Andor there shortly, um, and then do some kind of more old school or movies, and then do our uh, uh, kind of off the cusp topics um, that we've been sprinkling in here as well. So we are excited. Absolutely. Thanks, Madison. Yeah. We appreciate you tuning in as always, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. What? Cinemagic out. Whoa!